Next up is the San Benito County Health Care District. And um, everybody can come on up, whoever's here to join on that. So we're going to have on this, um, we're going to have all three districts, so District 1, 3, and 5. All three of the districts will be combined uh, for the forum, and that would mean that some of the candidates on the stage will be competing for the same seat and others won't. The beginner, the first person to do the intro will be Esther Perez. She, Okay, so we'll go ahead. Uh, next person to speak um, for the intro is Victoria Angelo. So um, briefly state my position on Insight. I think Insight is a good idea. The reason I feel that way is I have a lot of experience. Make sure you're close to that oh, mic. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, you guys. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, good. There we go. So I have a lot of experience not only working in a hospital, working in management of a hospital, and also managing my own business uh, prior to becoming a nurse. I have 17 years behind me as an ER trauma nurse, and um, so I've seen a lot in the hospital settings. The hospitals that I've worked for have all been larger facilities, um, and so what that brings for you is the ability to be able to, is my time up? Sorry. <laughs> Can I keep going? Okay. Yeah, I lost my time. Okay. Sorry. Next per um, go ahead with the mic. Um, Stacy, you're next. Can I hear you? She hasn't said anything yet. I'm going to move the mic closer <laughs> to be sure that you can hear me. My name is Stacy McGrady. Thank you so much. You know, two years ago, our current hospital board, uh, they announced a fiscal emergency. They went to the county requesting funding. They filed for, or attempted to file for bankruptcy, and then they gave the current CEO a hell of a contract. Um, I am a very involved community member and a retired law enforcement professional. Over the past two years, I've been attending board of supervisor meetings, community meetings every week, and hospital board meetings. I. I'm out. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it okay. is not enough time. And Director Johnson, you would be next. Uh, is this 30 for the, seconds. For Just number one? To introduce yourself. Okay. My name is Bill Johnson. I've been here my entire life. I'm 72 years old. I was a retired teacher from the high school. Um, my kids were born at the hospital. Uh, I was too um, on Monterey Street, which many of you don't know that that's where it was. Um, I've been on the board now for four years, um, and uh, I feel like uh, I've, I've learned so much and see that the uh, management of a hospital is a complicated, multifaceted operation that requires lots and lots of things that goes into it. Uh, certainly, the Measure X is one part of it, but there's an awful lot more, and I think that I thank, can offer thank that. Thank you. Uh, the Next in intro would be by Dr. Gabriel, Dr. Nick Gabriel. You have 30 seconds. You can talk and he'll turn on your Good morning. I don't really wear suits or I don't commute into a Hollister via a jet. Um, this is who I am. I'm the general surgeon in town. I have done close to 800 procedures here, have helped people. I actually did or saved two lives this morning already, and I'm on call again. So if I have to run and get out of here, it's because of that reason. I've been in healthcare for over 30 years. I've been in leadership positions. I train surgeons across the country, and I'm known internationally and nationally, and I could bring a lot, and I have already have, actually. I've recruited physicians to Hazel, including the gastroenterologists, okay. who've increased the Thank amount of procedures by 160%. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Richard Perez, 30 seconds to introduce yourself, please. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Richard Pettis, Sr., and uh, it's an honor to be running for the hospital board district. Uh, with 30 years of experience, uh, I have project management, uh, project planning, and uh, 10 years of community service. Helping those underrepresented uh, community members uh, receive health care is one of the priorities of my mission. Thank you. 
Uh, next question, uh, we're opening up for the questions, and the first one to go would be Stacy McGrady. I'm gonna read the question to you. Um, briefly state your position for or against the inside hospital lease sale option, and please explain why. You have one minute. Absolutely, I am strongly opposed to the sale to Insight. When the hospital fiscal emergency was initially announced two years ago, um, the hospital board made it clear that they were looking for a partnership, and partnerships were supposedly being explored, although I have information that many of the uh, local healthcare organizations that should have been contacted, could have been contacted, might have been partners, they were not contacted, they were not um, brought in to participate in the negotiations. So unfortunately, we missed out on those, on those opportunities. There, I know that there's um, a hospital management company called Ovations. They expressed an, in, an interest in assisting with the management of our hospital without purchasing our hospital. I'm not saying that is the answer, but it is, it is an option. And if we sell the hospital, we have no more options. Thank you. Uh, Nick, uh, Dr. Nick Gabriel, you would be next. You have one minute to sure, answer the sure. question. I was initially hired or recruited by Hazel uh, based on my reputation to bring another level of healthcare services, not just surgery, but all over. Uh, so when I started in 2022, there was a need for new surgical equipment, cutting edge surgical equipment. And I, I appreciate the board for at that time approving the equipment. So we actually have the latest state of the art surgical equipment in my OR. But like better than Natividad, they don't even have this equipment, Salinas, et cetera. So we are doing high-end surgical procedures now that can rival Stanford, UCSF. And then I was in the process looking at the logistics of things. I'm like, we need GI here. So I called my friends from around the state, gastroenterologists. They're coming. They're driving in. They're flying in. They're doing what they can to help the community. And I actually invested in the community as well. So like I said, I'm here to stay. I think the hospital can be profitable on our own, and when I think we need to keep it, I think it's doable. You know, it's hard work, but if we work together, it could be done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Victoria Angelo, you're next. One minute, please. I'm sorry, the question again. Uh, the question is asking you, briefly state your position for or against the inside hospital lease sale option and explain why. Okay. So as I stated, I am for the uh, Measure X, I am for the lease option to buy. And the reason being is I've seen a lot of hospitals that have had to close that were standalone. I worked out in Central Valley when Tulare closed. Those nurses were left without jobs. The doors closed one day, they came into work and the doors were locked. They j weren't offered anything. And that's what I'm afraid would happen here. I. Um, I am for keeping the doors open, whatever that looks like. And I believe that partnering with someone is what our best option is going to be. When you have a larger company you're working with, you're able to then bid for your supplies and whatnot at a lower cost. Right now, as a standalone, we have to pay higher rates for things. So I'm just looking at it from the point of view of a, of a business perspective and providing for the patients what they need. You're gonna have better patient satisfaction when you have what you need to provide care. Thank you. Uh, Director Johnson. Yeah, uh, am I for or against the sale to Insight? Uh, yes, uh, in both ways. Is, is that, you know, as the, a board, what we did when the uh, Insight situation was presented is what we were not against or we were not for the sale. Uh, in order to ensure that it would work out for the district, we uh, put covenants in place that would stop um, the loss of services, that would stop the uh, letting go of, of personnel, that gave us a, a right of first buyback, so we have protected ourselves there. Uh, just as a statistic for people to be aware of, and you've heard little bits of this uh, along the way, and I have to watch my clock, 200 hospitals Rural hospitals have closed in, uh, since in 2005. 703 are at risk of closure in the next two years. Hazel Hawkins is one of those. We, we need an infusion of CAS. If it's not from Insight, then it's got to be from another partner. And the Major X is um, for Insight or qualified buyer. Thank you. Richard Perez, one minute, please. Um, I'm absolutely against it. 
uh, and the reason being, I've spoken to Insight, um, and there was a, a, a huge oversight by the board and the management when they said that this hospital needed to be sold. It is not insolvent. Uh, a lot of people are under the impression that services are going to close. They're not. Um, I think what we need to do is our due diligence. We need to have people on the board who are going to look at these financial, uh, do a financial forensics and really dive deep into what happened. There's a problem with billing. Um, I think some people in the organization have been overpaid. And I think it's really a, a disservice to the community if we allow this uh, huge asset to go to a, a company we, we know little about. Um, just recently when Mr. Mays was up here, I didn't get the answers. I don't know about you. I, I heard a lot of I don't know. And that cannot be where we stand when we make a sale like that. Um, according to Insight, they don't have a problem working with us and a new board. So I think it's up to us as a community to really work together to try and find the solutions Thank you. And, and not put it all on just one measure. Thank you. Okay, next question. And Richard Perez, you get this one again. Um, have you previously managed a business or handled a budget and if not, how will you plan? How do you plan to contribute to the board? So yeah, I am a small business owner, um, and previously I have worked on government contracts, um, multi-million dollar contracts for the for the military. So I know what it takes to be uh, uh, held accountable and make sure that the metrics are met, uh, performances are there, and that we're doing our due diligence in the back end to make sure that it's profitable. Um, we, we definitely don't want to have an instance where we didn't do enough to find out what is really causing our hospital to underperform. So I think it's important that we have new board members who are going to be able to do that dedication. And as a community member for the last 10 years, I've volunteered on several boards. Uh, the Community Action Board, the Workforce Development Board, uh, uh, President of a Nonprofit, uh, uh, the Civil Grand Jury. So all of these instances are what we call oversight, governmental oversight. And I think that's what we need to bring to this particular instance. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Gabriel, uh, one minute, if you have that question, or would you, do you need it read? That's simple. Before coming here, I had a robust practice in New York. I'm an entrepreneur. I had a multi-million dollar solo private practice in New York doing bariatric surgery, advanced minimally surgery, et cetera. And now, being invested in this community, guess what? I opened up my own private practice, which I didn't know where the hospital was going with its bankruptcy, but I wanted to provide health care for the community. I'm invested in the community. So yes, I have a private office in town where, God forbid, whatever happened with the hospital, I could still take care of our residents at other local hospitals. So yeah, I am an entrepreneur. I opened up my office. I'm going to be successful wherever I go. And with regards to service lines and improving what I can to the hospital, I'm already doing it. I'm ending Thank it there. Thank you. Uh, Victoria Angelo. So I had, um, prior to becoming a nurse, I managed a construction business for 20 years. It was a business that my husband and I had started together so that I could be home with my kids when they were little. And we grew it to a rather large business. I was responsible to make sure that the contracts were out, that all the insurance was up to date and as it should be, to make sure that we could do the jobs and collect the money so that my employees could be paid and that their insurance could be paid. So I have that part behind me. Now this was back in the 90s. So I could hold my own in that group of men that really didn't want to deal with a woman coming out and doing you know, estimates on a roofing job, but I could hold my own in that. Um, from there, I went into nursing and I fell in love with emergency and trauma. And I feel that my experience as a business owner and my vast experience in the medical field make me qualified for this position. I know what it takes to run a hospital and facilities, and it's a lot different than just a usual business. There's a lot more that you have to consider. Thank you. Stacy McGrady. Thank you. Um, as a detective sergeant with Monterey County Sheriff's Department, I was in charge of the coroner's division, which included the coroner's division budget, uh, which was many thousands, millions of dollars, including uh, developing our center for uh, 
organ and tissue donation, which was a, a, an amazing endeavor. After retirement, I had the opportunity to go back and work at the SPCA, where I was in charge of our humane investigations and our barn. I managed both of those budgets, um, being very aware that all of the money that we had was made by donations, and we were critically aware of being responsible to our donors. Uh, we were a five-star charity navigate in the Charity Navigator. Um, since being on the civil grand jury, I've had the opportunity to closely review and look at many of our local government budgets, so I am very familiar with budgets and the process and would bring that experience forward. Thank you. And Director Johnson. Well, prior to being on the board, I had to manage the budget for a football team, but this is a little bit bigger. Um, in the four years that I've been here, I've seen the amount of money that goes into recruiting doctors as good as Dr. Gabriel and some of the other people that we've gotten. Also, the, what goes into the amount of equipment that they need. Uh, it, it is an expensive operation. We had a $2 million roof put on. There's constant upkeep on a hospital that's 62 years old, and the life expectancy of a hospital is supposed to be somewhere around 60 years. So we're operating in a, in a facility that is... Uh, on, on its last leg, so to speak. Um, the other things that are going to be needed are, uh, are expensive, and therefore they require money, and um, you know, my experience with the board has given me the ability to juggle what needs to be paid for now and what can be put off. Thank you. Now it's our last question. Um, Dr. Gabriel, you will go first on this. How much research have you done on Insight? And what do you know about the rural nonprofit hospitals Insight has purchased and what those services the hospitals provide? That's an easy question because I am an educator. I sat on the Board of Surgery for 15 years. I've taught residents around the country. All I have to do is make a phone call. Everyone is familiar with these hospitals that I've made phone calls to because I have connections. However, I am protective of my physician colleagues, so therefore I am going to not make a comment on what I know. But I do know that for a fact that we have the ability, or I have the ability to recruit, we can make it in this hospital. We can make it on our own. And I think coming from an outside facility is not ideal. I've seen an iconic hospital in New York, St. Vincent's Hospital, same thing. They got help from a corporation. And guess what? I was just there. It's still a ghost town around there. The mom and pop shops have closed down because the employees have been, you know, fired, right? Once a corporation turns a hospital into a real estate investment, it's gone. The community's gone. Thank you. Thank you. Stacy McGrady, can you answer that? Thank you. So I have, um, I'm law enforcement. I ask questions. I investigate. I want to know. I want to understand. I'm curious. So yeah, I have done a lot of online searching and poking around with Insight, with Dr. Shaw, with where the money goes once they take it through, through our nonprofit to their, um, through their management and consulting into their for-profit to support their personal endeavors. Uh, and I don't support um, taking our money the revenue that we create from our hospital and sending it back to Flint, Michigan. Uh, Insight Hospital and Dr. Shaw, they've only been in the hospital business for three years. They are currently buying hospitals like Sailors on Leave and they don't have the experience, they don't have the background, they don't have the training to support uh, the, the way that they're going. It's just not gonna work. Thank you. Um, Victoria Angelo. Thank you. So I have also uh, looked into Insight when their name first came up, keeping in mind that we, uh, from what I understand, the board did reach out to a couple hundred different um, hospitals and whatnot to see if they wanted to partner with us. And that came down to four offers, and Insight was one of them, and the reason Insight was chosen was because they agreed to all of the covenants that would secure jobs and pensions and our services for our community. So um, I, I think that they will be really good for our community. 
Um, as far as their nonprofits, I'm not sure about that, but I have looked at their other hospitals where they've expanded the community, they've reached out uh, beyond hospital and working with youth. Um, I think that would be great for us. I think that we could benefit from all of that as long as we're able to keep the essence of Hazel Hawkins. Thank you. And Richard Perez? Uh, just to be clear, Insight has no track record of rural hospitals. That's, that's first and foremost. So um, putting our trust into a company that has just started this nonprofit and just entered the market in California doesn't really seem uh, very prudent to me. So I would think that uh, our obligation first is to our residents. We need to make sure that we are getting um, the best deal we can uh, if there is a deal to be had. Because if Measure X doesn't pass, that doesn't mean that Insight is going away. And, and after speaking to their representative, that, that's almost assured. So they, they want to stay in the community, they want to help, but the thing is, is we don't know enough about them. Um, I, I do know that I have researched it, and some of their facilities remain closed. And that's a very concerning thing to me, especially when you have a company that's as large as they are. Uh, a nonprofit only will take you so far. Where is the other money coming from? Is it a corporate? Uh, I think you have to prioritize patients over profit. Thank you, and Director Johnson. Since Insight uh, submitted their letter of intent, I have heard all of their presentations to the board and, and the, um, the, the people that work at the hospital. I've also met with a lot of the critics of the, of the sale too, so I've seen and heard both sides of it. Um, the, the history of uh, Insight with rural hospitals like everybody else, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with. I know about the Keokuk Hospital in Iowa, and, and it, it remains unresolved. Um, but, um, you know, the, uh, the vetting of, the, um, of, of Insight is still going on, and should it be found out that they are uh, not suitable for Hazel Hawkins or not capable of doing a rural hospital, it has, you know, they would not be um, somebody that we would form a partnership with. So I think that the covenants and also the, the board, whether they be new or old, would go ahead and look at for the best interest of the hospital. Thank you. Thank you. And we now have, um, everyone has 30 seconds just for a closing comment. The first person to speak would be Dr. Gabriel. I'm invested in the community. I'm here. I want to do the best I can to improve health care for our our community and I think I've done a good job doing what I've done uh, the, the surgeries I perform the physicians I've recruited and I have a lot more to do uh, I am actually poised with my radiation oncologist and my medical oncologist to we are planning to build a cancer center in town we have secured 20 million dollars already but it has to work out for us that hasn't been published yet, it will be. I've tried to reach out to media to publish that because it's a fact and it's gonna happen. Thank you. Victoria Angelo, 30 seconds. Thank you. I know that Measure X is huge and it seems to be on everybody's mind, but that's not all that's involved with being on the board. Being a board member also means that you need to be able to work with your community. Um, my goal would be to establish good communication between staff and administration, with community also, uh, making sure we develop good uh, ways of managing patient care, which keep in mind, if your staff's not happy, your patient care goes down. I know that from experience. So there's many other aspects to being on the board other than Measure X. Thank you. Thank you. Stacy McGrady. You know, as Victoria said, if your staff's not happy, that's a problem. I know that the staff, I know that the nurses, I know that the doctors do not support selling our hospital to Insight. I do not support selling the hospital. Our hospital is a local business. I don't support selling out to a corporation. I'd rather shop local and keep my money local. I bring to this board strong leadership, critical thinking skills, and the courage to lean into difficult decisions. And that's critical for our board. It's critical for our hospital to succeed. Thank and that's why I'm the best candidate. Thank you. Director Johnson. I have four years on the board. I'm an independent. 
Um, as, as far as my independence goes, some people categorize me as being one of the members of the board, but I want to make sure that you know that I did not vote for the CEO raise. I did not vote for the previous CEO to be released. And when the sale was announced, I was the one that uh, put in the covenants to protect the people and, and the uh, best interests of the hospital. I listen and I evaluate, and the filter that I use to evaluate is that I want the best hospital and I want the best services for the people that live here. And I like to close with saying something that Abraham Lincoln said 160 years ago, don't change horses in the middle of the stream. Thank, thank you. And Richard Perez. Uh, so my intention for being on the board would be to bring uh, transparency and accountability. I think that's the most important thing that you can do as a board member to make sure that the public is aware and, uh, and has the right information about what's going on with the hospital. Too many things were left um, kind of under uh, scrutiny of, uh, is this right, is this wrong? So what I hope to bring to the board is to make sure that accountability, transparency, and integrity are part of the board's operation and making sure that everything that we do is in the public's best interest. Okay, thanks to all of you for coming today, and that concludes the healthcare district.